Hi, we would like to present you our paper called Explaining Hyperparameter Optimization via Partial Dependence Plots, which got accepted at NeurIPS 2021. AutoML systems are great. You input your data, you wait for some time and get back a well-selected and tuned model that is ready for deployment. Even though there are big efficiency gains through AutoML and hyperparameter optimization, AutoML systems are not very well adopted yet in practice. This is because potential users of AutoML systems do not trust and would therefore not deploy the models returned by AutoML systems. This is because, or one reason for that is, that they are lacking insights into the decision process of AutoML systems. What can we do about it? So, AutoML um, or hyperparameter optimization is based on an efficient optimizer, which usually use surrogate models that sequentially learn the relationship between configurations and performance, model performance on the other hand. As those surrogate models are basically the um, intelligence of an AutoML system, it would be very interesting to analyze, interpret and understand the surrogate model, so basically what the AutoML system has learned better. Unfortunately, um, the surrogate models are black box models in themselves, so it is not straightforward to interpret those. Therefore, we are asking ourselves whether we can apply methods of interpretable machine learning to interpret the surrogate models within AutoML systems. And we are focusing on one specific method called the partial dependence plot, which is a popular and simple to understand method. The partial dependence plot visualizes the marginal effect of a single hyperparameter against the surrogate, the prediction of the surrogate, which predicts model performance in the end. By um, integrating out all other hyperparameters except for this hyperparameter of interest. And as the surrogate mo um, and as this integral is usually not straightforward to compute, we are approximating it by a Monte Carlo estimate and um, replacing the integral by a sum where we um, sample basically values from the distribution of all other hyperparameters except for this hyperparameter that we are interested in. This distribution in the context of hyperparameter optimization is usually assumed to be a uniform distribution. And we can then visualize that for different grid values of um, yeah, the variable lambda s, and therefore we can come up with a curve representing or estimating the marginal effect of a single hyperparameter. Coming back to the case of hyperparameter optimization. So we have one problem and the problem is that the efficient optimizers within an AutoML system um, are subject to a sampling bias. So basically the data generated by an AutoML system is usually heavily biased towards um, yeah, regions of the search space where um, yeah the performance values are quite good because yeah we are trying to find the optimum as efficiently as possible therefore as the surrogate model is built on exactly that data um, the surrogate model is biased in the sense that um, it will have a good fit in regions where we sampled a lot of data and it will have a poor fit in other regions where we didn't sample that much and we will face because we will face a high uncertainty there. So now what happens if we um, yeah, just naively apply the partial dependence plot on such a surrogate model created on data that underlies a sampling bias? So, the partial dependence plot, as we've seen, is basically um, yeah, a mean estimate. 
and we can also understand it as an estimate or as an average over curves. If we, under the, this, um, under this big sum, um, if we interpret or fix basically the lambda, lambda CIs that we sampled for the Monte Carlo estimate, if we keep them fixed, we have basically a function that uh, takes lambda as its argument and therefore basically the partial dependence plot is an average over curves. And those curves have a name, they are called individual conditional expectation, short ice curves. So back to hyperparameter optimization and our data situation. So in this, um, in this plot we have um, as an example shown two ice curves, even though usually yeah, the number of ice curves is much higher to get a good estimate. But uh, for illustration, we only have two. But um, what we see is basically that we are um, averaging ice curves of um, yeah, pretty well learned effects, like the blue one, um, with ice curves that represent um, yeah, poorly learned effects because they are going through areas of the search space uh, where we haven't sampled many data points and where we therefore have a high uncertainty. And in overall, I mean, what we are doing is we are um, averaging um, bad ice curves with good ice curves um, and interpreting the average. And we are just not considering the fact um, that basically those bad ice curves will um, disturb yeah, the good signal that comes basically from the lower part here of the search space. And that in fact has, um, yeah, a bad influence on the quality of our partial dependence estimates. So as we can see, this is just a, yeah, um, a, a simulation that we conducted. The, higher the sampling bias, so a high sampling bias on this um, kind of visualization is on the, uh, on the left, the higher the sampling bias, the worse, um, the less reliable our partial dependence plot is as measured by a negative log likelihood. So our first goal is to uh, um, yeah, detect the sampling bias. We would like to be able to see in the partial dependence plot that we get how much uncertainty we have in the partial dependence plot. And um, in this visualization, you basically see with the blue curve, that is um, uh, the estimated partial dependence plot. Um, against the true partial, the ground truth, the true partial dependence plot, which is the black curve. And you see basically in different kind of data situations, the higher the sampling bias, the worse the approximation to the ground truth. And we would like to first, in a first step, be able to detect this kind of uncertainty um, by an uncertainty band, by an by this gray uncertainty band around the partial dependence plot. And um, yeah, as we in um, Bayesian optimization and hyperparameter optimization usually use probabilistic surrogate models, which give us a pointwise uncertainty estimate, we are able to um, derive an uncertainty estimate around the partial dependence plot. So in a first step, we derived an uncertainty estimate of a partial dependence plot um, at every single grid point, which now helps us basically to detect how large um, yeah, the effect or how much uncertainty we have around this estimate. We can now quantify and visualize the uh, confidence of partial dependence plot, which is already very helpful to understand if our PD estimate can be reliably interpreted on the entire hyperparameter space. However, we have seen that if an underlying um, high sampling bias is present in our data, which is often the case when using um, Bayesian optimization, 
that we receive really wide confidence band and that we didn't really know how the true underlying effect is of our hyperparameter on the model's performance. And so our goal now is to identify some kind of subregions within our entire hyperparameter space where our partial dependence plot can be estimated more reliably and also interpreted more reliably. So what we do is that we use a tree-based partitioning to partition the entire hyperparameter space here n into into disjoint and interpretable subregions by splitting the ice curves according to the similarity of their uncertainty. In this example, you can see that the hyperparameter space is split in two subregions according to some other hyperparameter lambda j. And in the left subregion, you can see that we receive way more a way more reliable PD estimate, which is shown in blue, since it is kind of close to the true underlying estimate in in black, and that we receive tight confidence bands here, especially close to the optimal configuration shown in yellow. In the right subregion, on the other hand, we receive very wide confidence bands and the true estimate is far away um, from our PD estimate. And so there we cannot reliably interpret the PD estimate. So what we do is we split away those um, uncertain subregions and we we focus more on, on the subregions where we can interpret our PD estimate more reliably. And we, uh, we do this splitting by the following split criterion, which is based on um, the loss function defined on, on this slide on the top. And the loss function here is the square distance of our um, as curves of the uncertainty estimate as um, to the respective PD estimate of the subregion we are looking at. So we are looking at the variation of the as curves of our uncertainty estimate, and we try to group those as curves according to their similarity, and therefore we receive regions where we have a higher confidence since we receive um, lower lower uncertainty estimates as shown on, on the left plot where we can see the ice curves for the entire half parameter space for lambda s uh, for the uncertainty estimate. And the green curves uh, are the ice curves of the uncertainty estimate belonging to our left node and you can see that our confidence here is um, that our uncertainty here is lower compared to the blue curves which are split away which belong to the right node and therefore we receive at least one subregions when we continue with the splitting where we receive um, a reliable and confident PD estimate. And we validated yeah, our introduced methods by applying them on, on, on the following experimental setting. So we used the surrogate benchmark based on 35 data sets of the LC bench data and where we optimized the hyperparameters of the deep neural network. And we used Bayesian optimization with um, Gaussian process as a surrogate model and re repeated the experiment 30 times. And we evaluated our results by using the confidence itself, meaning the confidence area of the confidence bands as an evaluation metric. And we measured the reliability of our PD estimate by calculating the negative log likelihood compared to the ground truth 
within the optimal subregion of the six splits and we compare it to our global estimates on the entire hyperparameter space. And our results show that on average of all data sets we receive for all of the hyperparameters um, a confidence improvement of at least 31%. And also our negative log likelihood improves by at least 12%. And on the figure on the left hand side here, you can see one example for the hyperparameter maximum number of units. So if we use partial dependence plot out of the box, as, as we can do it already by now, um, that we would receive this blue line on the left plot which shows that the, the performance is slightly increasing with more maximum number of units. And the black line shows us the actually current truth. So our actual influence um, of maximum number of units on the performance is decreasing. If we can now add the confidence bands, um, as we introduced it um, in our paper, then we can see that we cannot reliably interpret um, the PD estimate on the entire hyperparameter space. And to receive now a more reliable PD estimate, we, we apply our splitting procedure. And after six splits, we receive the plot on the right side uh, for the optimal found subregion. And we can see that we receive a very confident and also um, a PD that can be reliably interpreted. To summarize once again the contributions of our work, so we study and assess the implications of sampling bias for partial dependence blood um, in the context of hyperparameter optimization. We derived uncertainty estimates for partial dependence plot in the case of um, probabilistic uh, machine learning models. And a third contribution is um, our, our introduced met methods to obtain more confident and also reliable subregional partial dependence plot, at least for certain subregions. Last but not least, the impact of our method. So we provide a better understanding of the sampling process with our introduced methods and also a better understanding of how um, hyperparameters affect the model's performance. We also provide with that more insights about the AutoML, what the AutoML system has learned and allow with that for some kind of plausibility checks. And with that, we also help to build trust in the AutoML system and our vision is to pave a way to more human-centered AutoML where users uh, can interact with the system, for example, by some kind of feedback loops and to, to use within the feedback loop the gained insights using explainable AI.